John, the question, why is there something rather than nothing, has uh, perhaps obsessed you and I since we were very young and has, to a degree, haunted our lives. Um, as you look at this question now as a trained philosopher with a long career in philosophy, is this a legitimate question that we ask? I think it's a legitimate because it can have answers, even if you think that the answer is there just happens to be something, there might instead have been nothing, that's an answer. You might say such things as there's infinitely many ways in which there could have been something and only one way in which there's could have been nothing and therefore nothing is infinitely unlikely. I myself don't think that's a very good argument, but you could say this sort of thing. It's at least meaningful. But isn't this, if you have to ask every question you can ask, isn't this at the end of everything the most fundamental question that human beings can ask? I think you could argue that all your views about the nature of the universe, what's plausible when you give a general account of how the universe is, will in the end depend on whether the universe which you believe exists could have a reason behind its existence. You can see from what I've said that I don't like the theory that the universe just happens to exist and just happens to have the characteristics which it does. So. Any physical theory, you trace it back to some final theory, some ultimate theory, however far back you want to go, in the creation of the universe to the cosmic foam erupting in, in universes, that something comes out of that nothing. Well, that's not a nothing. That cosmic foam has laws, it has particles, antiparticles, law, uh, forces, all different kinds of things in that kind of nothing. You have to ask why there was that something. So at the end of the day, after we have either a final theory or a series of final theories or, or multiple universes with different theories and everyone, at the end of the day, we still have that question, why is there something existing rather than nothing? I think that's right. I don't think it would be possible to say, for example, quantum physics tells us that it's likely that a blank would uh, fluctuate into a real world. And that's your final answer, because the question would be, why does this quantum physics apply to reality? And it's not enough to say the quantum physics tells us that it's probably going to apply to reality, because <laughs> the basic question is, why would that set of quantum physical laws be right? Now, if you just look at that question, it would seem like, if you can ask the question, there's nothing you can do to go further. But in fact, philosophers have pushed the question further. One place I would start is the nature of, of nothing. It would seem that nothing is, is simpler and, and, and should have been there rather than something. Something you have to explain in different ways. Nothing, in essence, you don't have to explain. Well, I think that's correct. But bear in mind that you and I probably agree that even in a blank there would be all sorts of facts. So if you try to imagine out of existence all actual things mm -hmm. and say that's nothing, in a sense that's right, but also you've overlooked the fact that there's an infinite richness of truths about possibilities which is bound to exist even if no actual things exist. So in it's impossible to have purely nothing because you always have possibilities? You always have possibilities. You have facts about relationships between possibilities. And you have the fact that certain possibilities are good and other possibilities are bad. These are facts which you can't get away from. Well, uh, in terms of these possibilities, there are certain kinds of things which are relationships or logic or mathematical truths that... Um, that would seem to have an existence even if there were blank forever? I think so. If there were a blank, it would still be true in this blank that if there were ever to exist two sets of two apples, then they would make four apples. 
<laughs> and even if there was no possibility of them ever occurring? Even if there was no uh, actuality, real, real possibility of their occurring, there would be no contradiction in their occur occurring. Their occurring would not be like the occurrence of a married bachelor. <laughs> And therefore, do you say that it is impossible, a very strong word to a philosopher, if do you say it is impossible for there to be a nothing without possibilities? I think that's so, and I think you can go further and say that, that um, the situation would have to be infinitely rich. There's an infinite number of possibilities, an infinite number of facts about them, and those possibilities and the facts about them they would be there, even if there were no actual things forever and ever. So now in our nothing, which maybe naively I thought was, was very simple, we now have truths that exist, mathematical truths, logical truths, the fact that logical contradictions can't exist, but logical statements can, mathematical relationships, and now an infinite series of possibilities which even though they are not actualized, the possibilities exist. So my nothing suddenly becomes very rich. <laughs> it, it becomes very rich and it becomes even richer if you accept the view which has been pressed by one or two philosophers that the distinction between something being merely possible and something being actual is just like the distinction between being over there and being here, that all the possibilities are actual somewhere. That's, that's said as, as metaphor or as no, joke? No, some people have taken that completely seriously. They've said, for example, that uh, all the Greek gods, so long as they don't commit contradictions in their existence, they are somewhere. <laughs> this has been held. It's a bit of an odd view, and there's only perhaps five or six people, but they have included some very brilliant people who thought like this. But at the end of the day, we are still faced with this fundamental reality of dealing with either something or nothing. But now what we have is that this nothing has, has suddenly a, a very uh, deep richness of its own, which uh, gives us a very strange alternative of this rich nothing versus our very specific something that we have to explain. Yes, I think there is this problem why we have an actual world instead of just a set of possibilities. And uh, there are all sorts of reasons which people have come up with suggested answers. For example, that things exist at this moment because things were existing at the moment before and they were existing at the moment before then and so there's no problem. I myself think that the problem would remain, but this is controversial. Mm.